going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're going to be scaring away all the vampires in the garden because we're planting garlic. Let's go! So the first thing you want to do is look at your planting date. Before you even get garlic, think about planting garlic, you want to find the ideal planting date. For us, we find that the best time to plant garlic is about 30 days before your first frost. Any earlier than that, you're gonna have garlic that grows and you don't want garlic to grow too much, otherwise it's gonna put a lot of stress on the plant. If you wait too late, the garlic isn't gonna have enough time to get established and it won't necessarily die, but it will set itself back because then it's gonna to have to grow in the spring and that's all time where the garlic could be sizing up rather than getting growing. So planting about 30 days before your first frost date is the key. Next thing is picking the right varieties. All right, so once you have your ideal planting time, it's time to get your garlic. Now there's a few different varieties of garlic, I'm sure you know of them, but I'll go over them in case you haven't. There is soft neck, that means that the neck is literally soft. Then there is hard neck, obviously as the name implies, the, the neck on the garlic is hard. And there's actually a center core that runs through the entire uh, garlic itself. And then you have elephant garlic, which fun fact is not actually garlic, it's actually a leek. This is a leek that forms a bulb and you simply save the bulbs from them. Super cool, the more you know. So the main difference between hard necks and soft necks obviously is that one neck is hard, one neck is soft, get it. But there's also a lot of other differences. Hard necks will form what is called a scape. A scape is basically a flower stalk and that forms the following season around early June. If you don't cut that off, you're going to have smaller sized garlic heads because it takes a lot of energy to form that flower stalk. Soft necks do not form a scape. So if you're you know, someone that doesn't wanna um, you know, take the time to have to cut those off, it's nicer to, to plant a soft neck. Now, soft necks are a more heat tolerant or warm weather garlic. Cold tolerant varieties tend to be hard necks. Now there has been in recent years, some varieties that have been bred to be a little more cold hardy, but for the most part, if you're in zone six or lower, so six, seven, eight, nine, and such, you're gonna wanna go with a soft neck variety. But if you're in six or higher, so six, five, four, three, you're gonna wanna go with a hard neck. And that's gonna just allow you to have more cold hardiness. It's gonna do better throughout the winter. So it has a better chance of coming up in the spring. Next thing we've done is we prepped our bed. It's super important to prep your bed because garlic is gonna be sitting in the soil for up to six months. So you're gonna be planting it in October and you won't be harvesting it till July. So you wanna make sure that that soil is nice and loose, very fertile, very well draining. And so what we've done is we've added a nice layer of fresh compost. So we just got this compost from our local compost facility and it is amazing. When I smell it, oh, it screams one thing at me. It screams my garden's gonna grow great. That's what it screams. So this, this compost is finished, it's beautiful. It smells amazing, but it was also really cheap. It's very fertile, very well draining. It's gonna hold on to the right amount of moisture so that the garlic grows well, but garlic is very susceptible to rot. And so you wanna make sure you go with a soil that's going to be well draining so that it doesn't hold on to too much moisture near those cloves. Now, we also went and bought some compost because our piles weren't totally finished yet and we needed to make sure we had enough to top off our beds. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna go through the anatomy of a garlic head. That way you can better understand the different terminologies used when we're talking about planting garlic. So the first thing I wanna start is with the bottom of the garlic. Where the roots come out of the head of the garlic is known as the basal plate. All of the cloves are actually gonna be attached to the basal plate. Next, you have the neck. The neck, as I talked about, is either soft or hard, but that's where the leaves come up from the main garlic plant that once it's pulled up, those leaves are gonna, be a, are gonna be attached and fixed to the neck of the garlic. Then, as you break them apart, you have, obviously, cloves. These cloves are individual little mini garlics that when they are planted, they can then divide out and they become a new head of garlic. Next, you have what's called the skin or the paper. The skin of the paper is this stuff right here. Every clove will have multiple layers of skin and each layer of skin is associated with a leaf on the garlic. So as your garlic is growing up, if it has one set of leaves, that is one layer of skin or one layer of paper. If it has two leaves, that is two layers of skin. And so oftentimes when you get garlic, it has been cleaned down to one or two layers of skin or paper. And so we can take this off here. That was one leaf, right? Then we have another, another layer. There's about two, maybe three layers of paper on this head of garlic here. 
Now, it's very different from onions, which every layer on an onion, every ring on an onion was a leaf. So it's very similar, but it's also different. Now, when you plant your garlic, you wanna leave the, the first layer of skin or first layer of paper on the cloves. You do not wanna peel them because if you peel them, they're gonna be basically exposed and raw and open to soil bacteria and other you know, microbes and stuff like that, and they're gonna end up rotting. Now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start planting our garlic. So we've amended our beds with the compost already, and we want about three to four inches of loose soil. If it's not three to four inches, you wanna double dig your beds or broad fork them, fill them up with soil. You want about three to four inches of nice loose soil because garlic needs to have loose soil in order to expand in the soil. If your garlic is uh, compressed or the soil is very compacted, it's gonna squeeze your garlic heads and the cloves as they form and you're gonna end up with very undersized garlic heads. So we're gonna take our shovel here, kind of work a little hole, and we're gonna space our holes apart about every three, three and a half inches or so. In years past, I did space them closely together, but I found that um, I did not have as good of results as I did when I had my garlic about three to three and a half inches apart. That I find is the sweet spot for maximizing the amount of garlic you can plant in a given space without overcrowding that space too much. So a little pro tip, you can use a tool called a dibbler. Now a dibbler is basically a conical shaped little spear, if you will, and you simply do the same thing I'm doing with my shovel, but it makes a perfect uniform little hole for planting bulbs. I don't have one with me, but they are fun to use. One last thing when picking the right type of garlic to plant is you do wanna go with seed stock garlic. The difference between seed stock garlic and what is known as culinary garlic has to do with the size or the diameter of the bulbs. Now, these heads of garlic are at least two and a half inches in diameter. Any smaller than that will yield a smaller clove and smaller cloves will be less hardy, less resilient. They're gonna you know, produce a smaller head. They're a little bit weaker. And so uh, a lot of times undersized heads of garlic are sold in grocery stores as culinary garlic. Now, I've said for years as a beginning gardener, if you wanna to go to the grocery store, you definitely can go buy some US grown garlic. You wanna go with US grown, not anything grown in China or Chile or, um, or Brazil or any other of those countries that uh, grow a lot of garlic and import it in because the basal plate, the roots on the bottom have been dug out. They've actually dug those out to remove any soil or foreign, uh, foreign matter that might come in. And so uh, the US quarantine laws have that removed so that they don't have any hitchhikers coming in on the garlic. And so uh, that will actually kill your garlic and they won't sprout. So go with US grown. But even if you are a beginning gardener, I would say spend a little bit more money, get seed stock size garlic because the yield is gonna be so much better. And then once you have your beautiful large garlic heads at the end of the season, you can then use those as your seed stock. So you never have to buy garlic again. If you start with small garlic, you're most likely gonna yield small garlic and then you're never actually gonna end that cycle, that loop, and you're always gonna have to buy fresh garlic seed. So just a tip, just an idea, use it, <laughs> use it as you will. But I always start with certified seed garlic size. So we're just breaking apart the cloves here, separating them out individually. And I got down to the center core there on the hard neck, and you can see what I'm talking about. That is a huge chunk of plant material, not breaking, that's it's hard. And so that is the center of a hard neck. Whereas if you were to get to the center of a soft neck variety, they just have endless amounts of cloves that <laughs> you never have a center hard neck. Check it out. So you get a lot more cloves, they're just a little smaller in the center. See, no neck versus, where'd you go? Ha, versus a neck, <laughs> no neck, neck. All right, so when you're planting your garlic, super important that when you have your holes here, once they're, they're pre-done, you wanna plant your garlic about an inch, inch and a half deep. You don't want it terribly deep. Planting garlic too deep will have the same effect as having compressed soil. Even if your soil is loose, having your, your garlic too deep. It's gonna compress those heads and those cloves and you're gonna end up with smaller garlic. I like to plant my garlic with the pointy side up, basal plate down. And I like to put it in the soil just so that when I cover it up, it's the top of the little, the little tippity top uh, of the garlic is just poking out of the soil. That way when it actually starts to grow, that's gonna be where the leaves form. And that means it's gonna be right at soil surface. 
Now, another tip when you're planting your garlic that I thought I'd just give you is that when you're planting your garlic, only plant the largest cloves. Now, if you paid good money for your seed stock size garlic, you might still have some small cloves inside, especially if you go with like a soft neck variety, it's inevitable that those cloves are going to be smaller. Now you can take this as you, as you will, use this tip or just discard it. But I find that those smaller cloves are better just to use in cooking anyways than they are to plant. And I just kind of account that for some of the cost of growing garlic is that I'm gonna plant those outer cloves, those bigger cloves first. And if I'm feeling risky, I might plant them, but just know that generally those smaller cloves are going to yield a smaller head of garlic, which might not be a problem to you. But if I only have so much space and I have lots of garlic to spare, I'm gonna only plant the largest because that way I guarantee the hardiest, healthiest heads of garlic Come next year so just a little tip that um, i've kind of found out throughout the years but the other thing the other tip that i thought i'd give you is when you're planting your garlic i like to plant my garlic before i cover up the soil one of the biggest mistakes i made and this is such a i don't know i like to kind of share some of my embarrassing moments and this happens every once in a while i plant my garlic and i cover it up well the problem is is i always forget where my garlic is at in the bed and then when the garlic sprouts it looks like i was you know, 10 beers in trying to try to plant my garlic because it was just all over the place. So I leave all my holes open. That way I can see right where my rows are. And that way I'm keeping a nice orderly planting because the more orderly you can keep your bed, the more garlic you can plant and the more efficient you are, obviously, the more productive your garden is going to be. So I don't cover up any of my holes until after I'm done. Just a little tip from experience. All right, so we just got all of our garlic planted and now it's time to amend. Now, amending is not necessarily fertilizing. We already did that. You wanna make sure that when you add your compost and you're kind of working the soil, getting ready to plant, you also apply a nice all-purpose fertilizer. We use Trifecta Plus. That's what we use in all of our garden. Trifecta Plus is available over at amigardener.com. You can also get it on Amazon, which is great. But we use Trifecta Plus to fertilize the soil and the compost, all that's already done. Now we are following up with an amendment of sulfur. What we do is we just throw it in a little pot with some holes at the bottom, a little fun tip for you. And we use that as a shaker bottle. So then now we're adding sulfur to the soil. The, what sulfur does is it prevents uh, your bulbs from rotting in the soil. Like I said, your, your garlic bulbs are very prone to rot, especially in the early season and late fall when it's damp and cool. And so to prevent that, we're adding lots of sulfur. Now I'm gonna be adding about a pound per uh, per 16 square feet, about a pound of sulfur. Okay, so you got your garlic all planted up, soil's all amended, it's been fertilized, you're ready to go. All you have to do, just cover it up. I just give it a good rake over. That actually turns in some of that sulfur as well into those holes, gets everything kind of incorporated. And then the final thing you're going to do is you're gonna mulch. Now mulching is very important. If you don't mulch your garlic, you know, the world's not gonna end but what will happen is your soil is gonna compact over winter. You see, you get all that snow, that's weight. Then you get the, the rain in the spring and that's gonna uh, deflate the soil as well. And then when the soil dries out, you're gonna end up with a really compacted layer on top of your soil. And mulch helps to prevent that from actually compacting. It's called caking and it prevents, uh, you know, I love cake, but I don't like that type of cake. And so you don't want your soil caking because it's gonna compress and compact around your garlic. So make sure you mulch. Garlic is pretty cold hardy, as I said, and so I'm not terribly concerned from that standpoint about you know our winter being too cold, but I am concerned about the compaction. And so that's what the mulch is gonna prevent. The type of mulch we use is known as animal bedding. It is like a shredded pine mulch. You can get it at any hardware store, any pet supply store will have these, those big bales of basically pine shavings, if you will. It's weed free. It's super lightweight. It holds on to moisture well enough that it acts as a great mulch and it suppresses weeds in the spring. So it is awesome. I've been using it for years. I cannot recommend it enough. We don't have any right now, but we're gonna be getting some in the next week over at, uh, we got ours at Tractor Supply. They've got some and it's awesome. Um, but pine also breaks down fast enough. If you want with cedar, cedar takes a long time to break down, but pine breaks down over the course of a season. So uh, it won't affect your soil at all to have it in there. Um, but then the final thing too is make sure you water it well. Once you water it, it's gonna settle everything in. This bed is gonna get a nice watering in and we won't touch it until about July. 
That's the great thing about planting garlic is you plant it now, you don't harvest it until about the first week of July. Everything after that is just watering and watching it grow. And then if you planted a hard neck, coming through and picking those scapes off. So I hope this helped in some way. If it did, make sure to throw a like up there. Share in the comments box down below what you learned, if you learned something. And if you thought this video was fun and informative, make sure to share with a friend, I'd appreciate it as well. So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed and grow bigger. Take care.